All right, so anyone in class today not get the chapter 13 examples or the participation question? All right, fantastic. Whew. All right. <clears throat> All right, so today we will um, start talking about concentration summary. So for that, start the question here. Um, yeah, so if, if you uh, are taking the class face to face and miss the participation questions for the day you come in, um, there's not really a way to make that up. Just note that like, as in a normal semester, the participation grade doesn't require you to attend every single day to get 100% credit. I will drop some days from the semester. So if you miss a day or something like that or two, that's not going to decrease your particip participation grade at all, right? Um, you'd have to miss a, a decent number of grades to just start drastically impacting that por portion of your grade, right? So, so if you miss a day, that's okay, um, right? Just like if you're doing online class and you forget to take the online quiz, um, that counts towards your participation grade one week. It's not going to drastically impact your grade Right, just like missing a quiz once won't either because one quiz will be dropped in the semester and things like that, right? So, all right. <clears throat> okay, so I guess actually before we begin, I'll start off with just asking are there any questions people have based off of anything in the course? Lecture material, example problems, homework, um, quiz, whatever. Uh, looked at done or anything coming up they're curious about all right then now <clears throat> so we get started here just go over our concentrations right um, I guess I haven't kind of written up here uh, do it. Oh, the chat open. Go. Do this here. Screen. Right, I guess. So, paying close enough attention. All right, so let's work through these together, right? And first, ask right for molarity, right? So, so every, we have a bunch of different concentration units here that we're going to talk about in this class. That's because these different expressions of concentration are used all the time in a variety of different applications, okay? Um, right, <clears throat> it's sort of, I'm in a, a right, things like, Pressure. Pressure is expressed in a bunch of different types of units, bar, PSI, atmospheres, pascals. Um, I'm forgetting some, right? But there's a bunch of different different ways to express pressure, right? Temperature, you have Celsius, Kelvin, Fahrenheit, right? Um, right, distances, meters, centimeters, nanometers, um, kilometers, miles, feet, right? There's a bunch of different units that you can use to express something. For concentration, it's the same thing. Now, what units are used for a given problem can depend on what, what you have available to you in lab, can depend on the relative size of the concentration, right? Like distances, right? If you're, you're talking about distance between 
Um, you know, Austin and San Antonio, you don't really want to express that in terms of inches, right? Meters, kilometers, miles, right? Is a more appropriate distance than trying to express it in terms of inches, right? And so depending on the, the, the magnitude, the size of the thing you're looking at, right? It might determine what units you want to use, okay? And so <clears throat> here, summarizing the different concentration units, right? Different concentration, um, co different ways we can express concentration. So molarity, right, is expressed as what? Yeah, so moles per liter, right? Moles of what? Solutes per liters of solution. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, so, oh, I meant to do one. Um, and actually, so, so I'm going to actually take a brief side tangent here. I forgot I was going to do this at the very beginning of class here. Um, let me see here. Really stop sharing. There we go. So sharing those lines. Let's flip me around. There we go. All right. So um, <clears throat> a couple things, right? We had our first quiz um, that was, was due this last week on Sunday. So people should be aware that while I'm older than you, I'm not that old. I know how to use Google. I know how to search for things on Chegg. And I know how to find if people posted questions that I created on Chegg, all right? And I already found some of the quiz questions on Chegg. And I'm not satisfied with that. I'm not happy about that. You're not supposed to use outside resources like that when you're taking quizzes and exams, okay? I'm trusting you with not having to monitor you while you take the quizzes. But if I keep on finding stuff posted on Chegg and other places, right, that are questions that I've created, written myself, right, then I'm going to have to start changing things up, give you less time maybe to take quizzes. I don't know. Do something, right, because it takes time for you to post it and someone to answer. So maybe I just got to give people less time to take the quiz. This crap is going to keep on happening, okay? So please don't right i'm just saying that right now please don't cheat on the quizzes don't cheat on exams right um you're going to be proctored for the exam so if you try cheating it'll be a lot more difficult for you it'll be recorded and people will be watching while you're taking exams if you're doing it online i guess i can look on the camera for that because people who are here today will be taking exams in class right but so yeah, if, if this keeps on happening, right, I might start changing how things are done for quizzes, right, to make it more difficult for people to cheat, but it also might make the quizzes more difficult to do, okay? So you're not going to just punish yourself, you're going to punish all of the class to keep on cheating, all right? So please don't, okay? That's my little spiel here, right? Do not cheat. Don't like it, right? So, all right. Um, and people can, like myself, request from Chegg to find out the information of the user who submitted that question online to find out who cheated if I want to take that path. Now, I'm not going to do that right now, but people who took these classes at the uh, spring uh, semester of this year, spring 2020, when we got all swapped online, there's plenty of cheating on the general chemistry classes. Those people who posted questions on Chegg were, um, had honor code violations uh, pointed, or not pointed, but you know, like were found out and had undergo honor code violations and such. So keep that in mind that there, if this continues happening, there will be repercussions for those who are doing it. Okay? So do not try to use others to answer your questions on exams or quizzes. You want to work with people on homework? By all means, that's fine by me. But exams and quizzes are supposed to be your own work. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. All right.
Okay, so back here to our concentration unit. So we talked about molarity, mole solute per liter solution, okay? Right? As, as a reminder, the solution contains what? And there, there's like two things, solute plus solvent, right? So the solution is the solute plus the solvent, right? So the liters of solution is the volume of the solute plus the volume of the solvent. Now, often the solute has a very, very, very small volume and the volume of the solution is basically the volume of the solvent, but it is not defined as such, right? The volume is defined as the volume of the solution, right? Which is more important if you mix, say, two liquids together, then often, right, your total, the volume of the solution is not just gonna be the volume of the solvent, right? But would be solvent plus solute, okay? Molality is defined as Yep, mole solute over kilograms solvent, right? Percent mass. Yep, mass solute divided by total mass, right? Um, here, I guess I'll use the math equation container. M total, or I'll, I'll say M mass of the solution, if we want to think of solute plus solvent, right? Right, solution, total mass, right? All right, so that's the percent mass parts per million ppm times a million right like 10 to the 6 right here times a million right that's why it's called parts per million is, is it's the, basically the, the mass ratio times a million. Okay. Right here, I use total instead of solution just to emphasize, right, that, that that's meaning the same thing, right? Solution or total, total or solution, right? However you want to call it um, is fine, right? I could also, instead of putting total, right, again, I could put solution, right? It's meaning the exact same thing, right? Okay parts per billion yep and 10 to the 9 right and then mole fraction finally Right, total moles. Um, here I'll use total because often we'll talk about, I mean, we can talk about mole fractions with gases and other things like that, not necessarily just a solution where we talk about solute and solvent. But again, the total moles, right, are the moles in the solution, right? It's solute plus solvent, okay? All right, I guess I can just write the solution which equals solute plus solvent, right? Total stuff is the solution, and that's the solute plus the salt. Okay? Right, and all of these things were defined and discussed in those lecture videos, which again, I recommend people watch those videos, look over the lecture notes and things like that, right? Because again, the idea of what we're doing in class is to emphasize and highlight certain points and then do lots of example problems. Okay. All right. So let's go back to then the PowerPoint slides here. So let's do an example problem here, right? Of how many grams of glucose must be dissolved to make exactly 250 milliliters of a 0.15 molar aqueous solution given the molar mass of glucose here. 
Okay. Right. This is the molarity example. Right. So I could switch over here. Right. So this molarity example in the handout. Right. Exact same thing. Okay. You don't have to necessarily write these things down. For those who have the handouts who come on Monday or come today. Um, right. And for those who are online, this, this document is available on Canvas. You can easily download it yourself. Um, All right, so um, to answer this problem, right, the first thing we want to know, right, is we're trying to find, right, how many grams of this do I need, right, and we're given the concentration of the solution and the total volume, right? So the volume of our solution is 0 0.25 liters, so I'm just going to convert that to liters um, right away, right? Divided by a thousand, convert it to liters, right? And we're told the concentration, right, is 0.15 molar. Okay, what is molarity equal to again? Right, mole solute over volume, right? Liters of the solution. Okay. Right, and so knowing these definitions of what molarity, molality, and other things like that are going to be needed to answer these type of questions, right? So you will have questions on quizzes, on exams, on handouts, um, and, and you know participation questions and things like that that will involve these concentration units. If you don't know what they stand for, then it will be kind of difficult to solve for these things, right? So, so keep in mind that you're going to need to know Right, that concentration summary slide, you're going to need to know what those units are, what they stand for to answer questions like this one, right? Or here, we're looking for the mass of glucose, right? Our solute, right, in this problem is glucose, right? Our C6H12O6, right? That is our solute, okay? So I can use Right, I have my volume here. I can plug my volume into here and I can use the fact that the ratio of the moles of my solute and the volumes of solution is equal to 0 0.15 to find the moles of my solute, okay? Right, and so I do 0 0.15 equals N of C6H12O6 right, the number of moles of that divided by the volume of my solution, which is 0 0.25 liters, okay? Again, keep in mind, right, why I converted my volume to liters is because, right, mol uh, molarity is defined in terms of liters, not milliliters, right? And so you need to make sure your volume is in liters when plugging in to this problem. 
just like molality is in kilograms, so you need to make sure the masses are in kilograms of your solvent. Okay. So I plug that in, multiply it over, and we get the number of moles, right, is equal to 0 0.0375 moles of C6H12O6. Okay. So those are the number of moles of my solute. Right, so now I have moles, and if you remember from Gen 1, 1341, right? If I have moles of something and I want to get the mass, what do I need to do? All right, I need to multiply by the molar mass, exactly, right? So I take, right, my molar mass, which is 180.18 grams per mole, and I multiply that by 0.0375 moles, right? The moles will cancel and I'll just be left with mass. And that comes out to be 6.76 grams of C6H12O6. Right? And so that, uh, that, that, how many grams we need to add of glucose to a 250 milliliter solution to make 1.51 molar solution. Okay. Questions about how we solve this problem? Um, Andrew, I have not posted the um, week two participation questions. I'll get those posted probably sometime today um, uh, for, for people to take that who are doing the course online. But yeah, I haven't posted those yet. So. All right. That's right. <clears throat> so next, we're going to essentially do Uh, oh, no, sorry. This is, uh, do I have this example here? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I want to just see if I get uh, molality. Okay. Um, molality. Okay, so I skipped molality here on the slides. So let's do that example next. So here, let me put up this. So we'll first do this question here. Right? We want to know how many grams of glucose must resolve in 536 grams of ethanol to prepare a 2.4 times 10 to the minus 2 molal solution. And as a reminder, right, the uh, molecular weight or molar mass, right, of glucose, right, was given in the previous problem, but I forgot to rewrite it here. 180.18 grams per mole.
when working on examples like this, again, you're welcome to, to talk with uh, people here in class. Um, on Zoom, what I can do is, let's see here, I can make uh, just a breakout room. Um, so what I'll do for the breakout room is if while you're on Zoom, if you want to discuss with other people about the problem or things like that, you're welcome to go to the breakout room and then I will close it. Um, I'm not going to use it for this question just uh, because I've already kind of waited some time for people to kind of work on it. But in future questions, I'll start using this breakout room for people on Zoom, for those who want to go into the room and discuss the problem, and then I'll close the room when I'm done, okay? But, um, or when we're ready to work on it together. But for now, uh, for this problem, we'll just kind of get started on it, right? So again, I'm told the mass of my solvent, right, is given in the problem, and that is 0. 0.5. Five six three kilograms. Okay, I'm given that the right the concentration of my solution is 0 0.024 molal. Okay, and again I'm given this molecular weight of my solute, and the question is right is what how much how many grams of the solute glucose do I need to add to that mass of solvent to make this solution right. So again, we need to first think about what is molality defined as, and what is it defined as? Right, moles, solute, over kilograms, solvent, which again, our solute is that C6H12O6 molecule, right, glucose, okay? And so if we plug in for the mass, right, the, the kilograms of our solvent, right, I get 0 0.024 molal is equal to, um, right, the number of moles of my C6H12O6 divided by 0 0.563 kilograms, right? Again, I have to make sure I convert my masses to kilograms, my volumes to liters if they aren't in those already. And so I multiply that over, right? So I multiply both sides. I'll just kind of show that here, right? Multiply both sides by 5.563 kilograms. Right? I got to multiply both sides by that 5.63 kilograms, okay? To get then the number of moles of C6H12O6 is equal to 0 0.0135 mole, okay? And then finally, we use our molecular weight, right? Our molar mass to get the um, number of grams. And again, we need to multiply by that molar mass. So I take my 0 0.0135 moles, multiply it, by 180.18 grams per mole. Right, my moles cancel. Oh, sorry. That up there, right? And that leaves me with 2.43 grams of C6H12O6. Yeah. So that is how many grams I need to add to my solution to make a point for the 0.024 molal solution. Okay. Any questions about this problem? All right. So next example question here, talking about mole fraction and mass percent. Okay. So in this problem, I have a solution that I make by dissolving 0.1 moles of sodium chloride and 8.6 moles of water. The question is, is, what is the mole fraction of sodium chloride and what is the mass percent of sodium chloride? Oh, 
Okay, so uh, there, there's um, two questions here on uh, Zoom. One, do we need to worry about significant figures? For Sapling, yes, Sapling cares about significant figures. For my, my quizzes and uh, exams, no. Uh, I, I don't care about significant figures. Um, that, that doesn't mean I want you to round, you know, some, some number to just one significant figure or whatever. If you have like, you know, 123.25 to round that to 100, don't do that, right? And, and don't also write 10 decimal places, okay? Um, right, but just within reason, right? Like I'm not really concerned that much about significant figures, right? So, so no, you don't really need to worry about significant figures. Um, and then the other question here is when we have a question where we have these formulas, right? Well, they'd be given the names, or will we be given just names or formulas? So in this class, I'm not trying to test, well, I know 1341, they try to test, right? Do you identify the name with the chemical formula, chemical formula with the name and things like that. I'm not focused on that here. I will give you the chemical formula whenever needed. And a lot of times I'll just provide the molecular weight as well but you'll at least be given the chemical formula like C6. I guess, you know, sometimes water, I don't bother, right? You know, so, so some, some very simple ones I might not bother, but typically like glucose, I'm not gonna expect you to know what that chemical formula is. You'd be given the chemical formula, which you can then use to calculate the molecular weight, or you might even just be given the molecular weight, just depending on the problem, right? So, so yeah, so again, I'm not, I'm not here to test your naming of compounds in this class. Um, so, so you should never have anything that is really difficult to identify what the molecular formula is if it's not given, right? And the most common one that wouldn't be given is something like water, medial with acids, like maybe hydrochloric acid or some of the names of acids maybe, but, but yeah, for the most part, formulas will be given. Um, so you don't need to try to like do names. All right. All right. <clears throat> um, so how do I find the mole fraction of water here? Or not of water, sorry. I, I had water written out, so I was thinking water might <laughs> but asking for the mole fraction of sodium chloride, right? So how do I find the mole fraction of sodium chloride? And moles of sodium chloride over the total mole, right? So that's how I find that mole fraction, right? What we're given, right, is we're told the moles of sodium chloride, right, are equal to 0 0.1 mole, right? And then the moles of water, right, um, the moles of H2O equal to 8.6 mole, right? And so this mole fraction of sodium chloride, right, is just equal to 0 0.1 over 8.6 plus 0 0.1, okay, is 8.7, right? <clears throat> Let's plug that into a calculator, you'll get 0 0.012, right? And that equals the mole fraction of sodium chloride. Okay. So that is the first part of this problem, right? What is the mole fraction of sodium chloride? Okay. For the next part of the problem, we're asked what is the mass percent of sodium chloride? Which that mass percent, right, of NaCl is defined as What is the mass percent defined as? Yeah, so the, yeah, so the mass. In this case, we're interested in sodium chloride, so mass of NaCl divided by total mass, right? So to get that, right, I need to calculate the mass of sodium chloride, and I need to calculate the mass of water, right? Get my total mass, okay? Right here, 
Um, I'll just write them out, right? The molecular weights um, or the molar mass, right? Uh, is equal to 58.45 grams per mole for sodium chloride, right? And then for water, right? It's equal to basically 18 grams per mole. Okay. So, right, so we have these molecular weights, right, or molar masses. Okay. So to get the mass of NaCl, what do I need to do? Yeah, so I take the moles of NaCl, which is 0 0.1 moles of NaCl, and then multiply that by the molar mass, right, which is 58.45 grams per mole. Okay, so again, moles cancel here, and then this gives you the mass of sodium chloride is 5.85 grams in ACL, okay? Then similarly, if I want to get the mass of water, oh, right, we take the moles of water, 8.6 mole, H2O, times that by its mat, molar mass, right, 18 grams per mole. And this gives us 154.8 grams H2O. Okay. So now we have the mass of water, the mass of sodium chloride. So now to get the mass percent, oh, which I forgot to multiply this by 100. My apologies, right? This, this mass percent formula is the mass of NaCl divided by the total mass times 100, right? Because it's a percentage, so I got to multiply that by 100. Okay, and so now the mass percent of sodium chloride, right, is then the mass of sodium chloride, which is 5.85 grams over the total mass, which is 5.85 plus 150, 154.8. Okay times 100, plug all that into the calculator. So, you know, 5.85 divided by the sum of 5.85 and 154.8. Multiplying that by 100, you get that the mass percent is 3.64%, right? And ACL. All right. So that is our mole fraction, and that is our mass percent. Questions? So we've just done some examples for most of the types of concentration units we deal with, right? Mass percent, molecular weight, or uh, um, uh, mass percent. Molarity, molality, and mole fraction, right? There's things like parts per million, parts per billion. But those are similar formulas to mass percent. You just instead of times by 100, you times by 10 to the 6 or 10 to the 9, um, right? But yeah. Okay. Right. So, no questions about these previous, uh, I guess, three problems. So we'll quickly just kind of simple question here. I'll go back to this the share screen. All right. So <clears throat> kind of a thought question here. Which of the following concentration units, if any, vary with temperature? Molarity, molality, mass percent, mole fraction, or none of these?
couple of people thinking E here, but none of them. Anyone else? Any other thoughts? That's a lot of E's, at least over Zoom here. All right, so let's look at some of these, okay? So start mole fraction here, D, right? Mole fraction are the moles of your solute over the total moles. Do the number of moles change with temperature? No, right? So that definitely is not impacted by temperature, right? There's no way the mole fraction changed by temperature. Mass percent, right? Mass of your solute, total mass. Mass change with temperature. No, right? Mass does not change with temperature. Temperature independent quantity, okay? Um, then molality, right? Our moles of solute over kilogram solvent, right? We just said both mass and moles, right? Do not change with temperature. And then finally, molarity is moles of solute over liters solution, okay? And the liters of the solution can change with temperature, okay? So, so liquids will expand and compress with temperature changes, um, not as drastically as say gases, right? Think of a gas, right? We, we learned with the ideal gas law, right? That as you heat or cool a gas, right? Its volume will increase or decrease, right? An example of that, right? Putting a balloon in a freezer or something like that, its volume will shrink as the gas cools off inside that freezer, okay? Right, a solution will do the same thing where it will expand or contract when it's hotter or colder. Okay, think of, right, as you heat things up, you got things moving faster, bouncing off each other more. And so the average distance between your molecules and the solution have increased slightly because now they, they're hitting each other with more kinetic energy. So they're bouncing off each other further and things like that. So, so things are spread out a little bit more as you go to higher temperatures. Okay. And so the volume can change with temperature. So molarity actually can to be depend on temperature. Now, it's not gonna change drastically with temperature, right? We typically don't bother worrying about temperature when discussing molarity, but it can actually change with temperature, okay? And that's sort of a thought question. We're not gonna have any examples where you have to think about temperature and calculating molarity or things like that, but as just kind of a, a, a thought provoking question here, right? Um, molarity actually is capable of changing the temperature because the volume of your solution isn't temperature independent and actually can depend on the temperature. Okay. All right. So in A here, molarity actually uh, is able to change the temperature. All right. So what we're going to do now is do an example problem with converting from different units. Okay. What I'm going to do for those on Zoom again, so, so I have right the example written up here, so that's why I just swapped over to this, right? So again, I have an 8% by mass aqueous solution of ammonia, just as a reminder, ammonia, right, NH3, okay? And the, the solution has a density of 0.9651 grams per mole, so that is the density of the solution, right? And again, it's aqueous solution. Aqueous tells us that the solvent is water, right? So this is the solute, right? And this is the solvent, okay? So the solvent is H2O, right? The solute is water, okay? And the solution itself has a density of 0.9651 grams per milliliter. And the question is, is what is the molarity, molality, and mole fraction of this solution, okay? So again, those, those on Zoom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a breakout room. If you'd like to go into that break, breakout room and talk about the problem, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, you don't have to though. So, but I'm gonna open up the room now and then I'll close it um, once, uh, Once uh, we're ready to work on the problem together as a class, okay? And again, those in class, you're welcome to work with people around you. You don't have to, like I know it's like, it, it's weird 
with, with how we're doing things is doing lots of example problems in class. I want like to encourage people to work together and work in groups, but we're also trying to like social distance and yada, 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 right? So again, you don't have to, but if you want to shout across the room, talk to a neighbor or something, you're, you're welcome to do so um, while working on this problem, okay? But we'll take a few minutes for people to work on this to, uh, by themselves or together, and then we'll do it as a class. All right, so everyone on Zoom is back, okay. So let's work over this problem together, okay. Grab. Okay. 
I'll give this extra paper in case I need it. All right, so let's start off here, right? Let's just start off with, again, writing what we know. We know that our solvent is water. Our solute is ammonia, okay? You can work out, again, the molar mass, molecular weight of, say, water, 18 grams per mole, right? Molar mass of ammonia is 17 grams per mole, okay? So the density of the solution, right, is 0 0.9651 grams per milliliter, okay? Um, right, and then the final thing we're told is that our solution, right, uh, is 8% um, NH3 by mass. Right, so the mass percent of NH3, right, is 8%, okay? And we're asked to calculate molality, molarity, and mole fraction, okay? Right, so as a reminder of ourselves, so actually I'll, I'll write that on a piece of paper, right? Right, again, remind ourselves the mass percent, right, is equal to the mass solute, over total mass times 100, okay? The molality equal the mole of our solute divided by kilograms solvent, right? Molarity is our moles solute per liter solution, okay? And mole fraction, let's say NH3, right? Moles solute over total moles, okay? Right, so let's just remind, these are all the different concentration units we're gonna use in this problem. So it doesn't hurt to write these things out to have an idea of what they are and what we need to calculate them, right? Like if I want to calculate molality, I need to know what my moles of solute and kilograms of solvent are, right? If I need to calculate molarity, I need mole solute, liter solution, right? So, so writing these things out gives us a good idea. What do I need to figure out what these are? And then writing out like the mass percent tells us what that tells us, right? That, that the mass percent is giving us an idea of the ratio of the mass to the total mass, right, times 100, okay? Now, if we notice in this problem, we're not told the total amount of solution that we have. We have no idea if it's a kilogram, one gram, 10 liters, five milliliters, right? We don't know. But, right, the definition of a solution is a homogeneous mixture, which means that the concentration is the same no matter how much you have of that solution, right? If I have a 10 liter solution and I take out five milliliters, the concentration in that five milliliters is the same as the concentration in that 10 liters, right? Concentration is the same everywhere in the solution, so it does not depend on the total amount. So in problems like this where you're not told what the total amount is, you can just assume some total amount, okay? And I very much suggest doing so because it makes doing the math a lot easier to assume. So what I'm gonna do, right, is we're given the mass percent, right? So I'm gonna assume my total mass is just 100 grams, okay? And I'm doing that because then I can multiply this thing by 100 grams, make my life easier, okay? So I, I'm assuming my total mass is 100 grams, okay? So now, going back up to the problem, okay, right? So, so I'm gonna write the assumption here. So I'm gonna put 100 grams total mass, right? And this is an assumption. All right, I'm gonna assume this, right? We're assuming 
that we have 100 grams total, right? And again, I can assume any amount I want. I could pick a number that's really annoying. I could assume I have pi total mass, right? 3.14, blah, 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 right? But it, it's typically better to assume like 100 this or one kilogram or one liter or something, you know, something that makes doing the math a little bit easier, okay? So now what I can do is I say, okay, if I have 100 total grams, then this 8% by mass NH3 tells me, right, that this 8 equals the mass of NH3 divided by the total mass, which is 100 times 100, right? That's the definition of mass percent, that 8% is equal to mass of NH3 divided by the total mass times 100. 100 cancel, right? So that means the mass NH3 is just equal 8 grams, okay? So assuming I have 100 grams of solution, right? So let's, I'm gonna just separate out, right? All this stuff up here is what is given or what we're assuming. And now we're kind of doing the work to calculate the things we wanna know, okay? Now in terms of calculating molality, molarity, and mole fraction, we can calculate those in any order we want. It doesn't really matter, right? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna pick like a random order to do it, but it will not change our answers with what order we do. And again, assuming some total amount will not change no matter what you assume, okay? The final concentrations that you calculate will be the same no matter what total amount you assume. I promise you that, um, okay? All right, so <clears throat> let's see here. We, a lot of these things, right? So if we go back to the units, right? So we need to calculate these three things all three of these require the moles of my solute. So right ahead, I know I need to calculate, assuming given those eight grams of my NH3, my solute, I need to know what the moles of is in those eight grams. So I'm gonna take my eight grams, right? And then I'm gonna divide it by my molar mass, right? 17 grams per mole, right? These grams cancel. And that eight grams is gonna turn into 0 0.47 moles of NH3, okay? All right, so now I got my moles of NH3, okay? <clears throat> so that's good. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get the molality next. Again, the, the choice is arbitrary. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna choose molality, okay? So to calculate molality, right, I need the kilograms of the solvent, right? The solvent is water. How do I get the mass of water in this solution? What is our total mass of the solution that we assume? 100 grams, right? The total mass is a mass of what plus what? Right, so solute plus solvent, right? Total mass, right, is equal to mass of our solute, NH3, plus the mass of the solvent, H2O, right? And we assume this is 100 grams. Based off the mass percent, that means that this is, oops, uh, this is eight grams. Let's just rewrite that. Eight grams, right? 100 grams. And then the mass of water, is just what we're looking for, right? M of H2O. So I just take 100 and subtract off 8, right? To get the mass of water is equal to 92 grams, okay? So I now have my moles of NH3, my mass of water. Now I have my mass of water in grams, right? Our definition of molality is per kilogram. So I need to convert that the kilograms, so this is the same thing as 0 0.092 kilograms. So then finally, I can get my molality by doing, all right, my molality is just equal to my moles of NH3, 0 0.47 moles, divided by my kilograms of solvent, which is 0 0.092 kilograms. And that comes out to be uh, 
have the numbers. Oh shoot, I didn't I don't have that written down right here. Uh, if someone has that calculated, they're welcome to tell me. Otherwise, I'll do that quick here. Say that again? 5.1. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So that equals 5.1 molal, right? And so that is my molality is 5.1. Okay. That is one of the guys we need. So next we need molarity, mole fraction. Okay. If I want to know, say, <clears throat> um, let's do mole fraction. Okay. If I want to know the mole fraction, I need to know the total moles. Okay. Which is the moles of my solute plus the moles of my solvent. Okay. So if I'm trying to get the total moles here, right? We know the mass of water is 92 grams. So to get the moles of water, so N of H2O is just going to be those 92 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 1 over 18 grams per mole. Okay. This comes out to be 5.11 mole H2O. So then my total moles is just 0 0.47 moles of NH3 plus 5.11 moles of H2O. So my mole fraction is the moles of NH3.47 divided by 0 0.47 plus 5.11. And so this, if I cut put this in my calculator correctly, comes out to be 0 0.084 as my mole fraction of NH3. Okay. So now we've got the molality and we've gotten the mole fraction. And questions so far? Let me, let me, sorry, pause here. I should have paused after the molality here. The questions about what we've done so far. Let me, Zoom out a little bit. Try to get more of this. Yeah. Um, because, huh? Uh, so, so the solute in this problem is NH3. So NH3 is a solute, and the solvent is H2O. So that yeah, so that's why we did 0.47. So so NH3 is our solute in this problem, um, and the solvent is water H2O. Um, but yeah, so that's that's why we ended up doing 0.47 on top. But good question. Other questions? All right. So finally, we need to get molality, right? Going back here, right? Molality is the moles of solute, or molarity, sorry, molarity, the mol moles of solute over liter solution, right? To get the volume of the solution, this is where that density that we had comes into play, right? So now, what I can use, I can use my density. So I assumed I have 100 grams of solution, right? That's what I assumed. I then take my density, okay, which is 0 0.9651 grams per milliliter, okay? <clears throat> and I will use that to calculate the volume of my solution. So 100 divided by 0 0.9651. Nine six five one. This will give you a. Let me move this up here, right? So this tell. So multiplying this out, this gives you 
103.6 milliliters of your solution, okay? Or converting that to liters is 0 0.10, actually I'm just gonna round this here to four liters, okay? So this is our volume of our solution. And so to get the molarity, right? The molarity is the moles of our solute, which is 0 0.47, okay? Right, I'm going to just cover up some stuff here. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just do that. Right. So the moles of our solvent, which we calculate is 0 0.47 moles, right? Divided by the volume of our solution in liters, which is 0 0.104. Okay. So we get 0 0.47 divided by 0 0.104. And that gives us um, <clears throat> molarity of. 4.52 moles. Okay. So now we've gotten our molality, right? Our molarity and our mole fraction, which are all the things that were asked for in this problem. Why did I get 100, 103.6? Uh, hopefully I plugged it in my calculator and 100 divided by 0 0.9651 equals that. Um, yeah, so if I plugged it in correctly, then that's where I got it from. Otherwise I made it up. Um, <laughs> I, again, I, I try to have these things pre-calculated and even sometimes when I calculate them before class, I sometimes make a mistake. So if ever you feel like my numbers don't match up, you they don't match up with whatever you plugged in, by all means share, let me know, and try to make sure that, that I don't have some sort of mistake in their calculations, okay? Other questions about this example? Um, so, right, in this example here, right, we did a number of conversions, okay? Now, you won't necessarily have a problem on, like, a quiz or on an exam where you have to do all of these different units in one problem, but you need to feel comfortable converting between these different units, okay? I guarantee you, you will see this question on quiz and or exams, okay? So, by all means, do lots of practice of this. I'm happy to do another example problem of this um, today, right? But the key steps, so I'll just highlight again the key steps of what we did here, right? Some of the key things, right, is first we kind of wrote down some of the information we knew. What is our solute? What is our solvent? Okay, the density was something that was given. We were given this concentration 8% by mass, okay? And then these molecular weights, okay? So those were different things we knew. In these conversion problems, we're, we're converting from one concentration unit to another. Often we will assume a total amount, either a total mass or a total volume, okay? Now, again, you um, uh, can pick whatever you want and you don't have to make that assumption, but it makes it a lot simpler if you do, okay? So I very much recommend making an assumption like that of some total amount. And then we also wrote down right at the beginning, we also wrote down these definitions, right? Of what's mass percent, molality, molarity, and mole fraction, okay? So we have an idea of what do I need to find, right? To calculate molarity, what do I need to find? Well, I need to find mole solute, and I need to find volume of my solution, right? That type of stuff. So, so writing these things out, if you don't have them easily kind of off your head, doesn't hurt to do so to make sure you're calculating the right thing and you know what you need to find, right? I know to find molarity, I got to find what the moles of my solute are and the leaders of solution, right? And so then after that, we just essentially did that. We picked something, right? I picked molality and I said, okay, I need these two bits of information. So how do I get those? Well, I get moles from mass using molecular weight or molar mass, right? 
And then I got the total mass from the fact that it's, right, I used the total mass and the mass of my solute to get the mass of my solvent, okay? And that gave me my molality, right? I used the mass of my solvent, right? Convert that to moles using the molar mass to get then the mole fraction, right? And then we use the total assumed mass and the density to get the volume. And from the volume, we then calculate the molarity, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> so as normal, I said I try to end a few minutes early so people can take their time leaving if they want to so that people don't pile up as they're leaving through the doors. For those here in person, um, please leave your participation questions on the table as you're leaving, okay? Um, if there are extra questions or whatever floating around somewhere, I'll pick them up. Don't worry about it. The drop off, the, your participation questions written on the table, okay? If you have questions, I'm happy to stick around, answer any questions here, as well as on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, so that was actually something that was uh, covered on Monday. So these participation questions will sometimes be kind of today, sometimes from previous days, but it'll be about material that we've covered in the past few days. So yeah, so that, that was something that we ended up talking about Monday. So sometimes I make these ahead of time and I you know, know exactly what I'll get to on what days as well. So. Yeah, and as Riley is saying here, make sure you're checking your SI attendance given the link that you shared on Canvas. And if you don't have a session you're placed in, contact her as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, so yeah. last Zoom class, uh, I attended it, but I didn't know. Is there uh, questions we have to do? For uh, if you're questions? online on, like if you're, if you're like, say, right, you're in group B, yeah. So if you're attending class in group A, you don't have to do anything. You just have to, when you come in on group B, fill out the thing, and that counts as your participation for the week. What do you fill out? So that's uh, like oh, my question. Oh, uh, the, the sheet, it, there should be extra sheets. So there's the participation questions. Oh, you just show up online, there's nothing you need to do. Uh, so for people who are doing online only, they have specific questions that I post on Canvas for them to answer. But if you're showing up through B for Mondays, you don't have to do anything. Okay. But yeah, even if I don't see your name, like I don't check the names there, I, I just go on this. Right? So technically, you so have your own. Yeah, for people who show up on Wednesdays and take Wednesday's attendance, people show up on Mondays and take Monday's attendance. And people online, I their their attendance is just through some some questions about material done gone over through the week to see if they you know were attending paying attention or okay. stuff like that. Okay, so. cool. I didn't know if I needed because I attended uh, last Monday, um, and I didn't know if I needed to turn anything in. No, I mean yeah. So if you show up Monday or Wednesday, there will be one of these things as long as you do it that day that week. Like I record participation per week. Okay. And so as long as you do one of these per week, then you get, you know, you have full participation for that. Okay, cool. So. Thank you. Yep. So this one, this is a Henry's Law question, right? Uh, yes. Okay, I, I, I was going to wonder if you could like go through it with me because mm -hmm. I always get yeah, confused that's with like, 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 do I have to from here and that would be like partial pressure. Oh, so, so, sorry, the, so this one atmosphere is the partial pressure of CO2, and then here you're told that the partial pressure of CO2 is now two atmospheres. So, so you're just given P. So this is P. So at this pressure, you have this concentration, and the question is, is what is the concentration at this new pressure? K is the Henry's Law constant. Yeah, so it's just, uh, so you can, yeah, for solving that problem, you can use the information in the first part to solve for K, and then you can use K to solve for the concentration in the second part. Oh, okay. okay. Um, or, I mean, there's some other ways to do it where you don't directly solve for K, but, um, but yeah, that, that's one way you can do that. All 
right. Doesn't seem like there's any questions on Zoom here, so I'm going to close out the Zoom session. Um, Wait. You guys, I guess Wednesday next week, since we don't have class on Monday.